Now we're back to using exorcism. This should be the 14th course right here. Analysis, destructured enchantments. It shows you every destructuring and rest and spread. So if you're not familiar with it, you might want to click on these two boxes up here. But it's a fairly straightforward concept, or both of them. So if we just dive in and talk about the tasks, you're going to understand them. It's a good exercise for beginners. Any information given here in the instructions is actually sufficient to pass these tests. Let us first check out the first one. We want to get the first card of a deck. And here it is explained how we can do that. In the example, we've got an array called Number of Moons. And we want to have a variable called First Card. But this is not going to be an array, it's simply going to store the value that comes first in the deck, which is the array. So to get that information, we need these brackets around first card. And obviously we'll use the deck as the parameter, which is our array. And then we want to return it. So it's explained in the first example on the right hand side. Right here, Venus, for example, would be 0, Mars would be 2, and Neptune would be 14. So this is the way you can access an array and store its value in a variable without using index or shifts or anything like that. And this is what you're supposed to do in task 1. And the tests, they show you we've done it correctly. So in this case, test 2, the 8 is stored as a value for first card, and we've got that returned via our new function. Let's go to task 2. We want to get the second card, and it's the same process. So in the example deck, we want to have the 2 returned when we call our function. Therefore, we need to declare a variable, and we want to have it access our deck array and directly store the value at a given index position. So we can directly write it like this. First card would now store the first position and second card the second index position. As we only want to have the second card, we can leave the first position right here empty anyway, but it's important to have the comma. So that way we're going to store the second index position of the card array in our new variable second card. And obviously we want to return that after we've done so. So task 2 was an easy one as well. Now in task 3 we want to swap these two cards. So in the example on the right hand side we've got a deck with 10 and 7. And we want to swap that so that we have 7 and 10. And after the remaining cards So let us use the concepts that are given in this exercise. Again, we need to declare a new variable and it's going to access our deck array. We need the first index position, let me call that first card again, and a second. And for the remaining cards, let me add a placeholder. I'll just call it remaining cards. But if we just do it like this, it would only access the third position of the array. Instead, we want to have all of the cards after the second position stored. And this is where we can use this operator, these three dots. And in the example, you can see A is 0, B would be 1, and everything else would be the remaining cards thanks to these three dots. So let us add that right here before remaining cards. We want to swap it. So if we return it, we return the second card first, after it the first card and then the remaining cards. And we are almost done here. But if we just run it like this, it's going to give an error. And the reason why is, you can see that right here in the tests, 
So the swapping was successful, but for the remaining cards, we have done something that we don't want to have. You can see that down here, we've created a multi-dimensional array. So remaining cards is a new array stored in the array that we are returning. And we want to have it as part of the first array, so that it's a one-dimensional array. Therefore, we need to add the dots here as well. So don't forget that. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And now we're good. Let's go to task four, which is this card, the top card. So we want to create two piles now. In the example below, we've got the deck. And if we call our function, we'll create a two-dimensional array. And the first dimension will be the two, the first card, and the second dimension will be the remaining cards. So let's go over this once more. We need a new variable that gets access to the deck array. We need our first card and after it, all of the remaining cards. These are our two piles. And we need the three dots before already to have all of the cards that are coming after the first index position stored in this variable. And if we now return it, we want our first card and the remaining cards returned. And this time you don't need the dots. And this is what creates this multi-dimensional array. We've had that before. Well, it was a mistake to do so in task 3, but this time we actually want this. So leave out the dots when you return it. And this gives you this two-dimensional array. Where the first array inside of the array that's returned is the first card, and the second array inside it is the remaining cards. Let's check task 5. We want to insert the face cards, Jack, Queen, King, and we want to insert them at a specific position, second, third, and fourth cards in the new returned array. So here the example deck, right after the first card, which is a 5, we need a Jack, Queen, and King, and then 4, 7, 10 for the remaining cards. The outline that we start with is the same as before, then we need the first card. And then we need our remaining cards. And what we want to return now is the first card. After it, we want to return right here the face cards. This is already declared by Exorcism, so I'll just copy paste it. And after it, we want to add our remaining cards. But again, be careful, if we do it like this, we would have a three-dimensional array. And it's not what we want, we want to have a one-dimensional array. So just check one of these tests right here. You can see without the dots before our variable names, we would have the first dimension right here, then the second with the face cards, and the third with the remaining cards. And to make it a one dimension array, we need our dots before face cards and remaining cards. I'll run it again. And now we're good. So, as I've said, a good exercise that's doable, even for beginners. When you get stuck, just refer to this walkthrough and I hope that this video was helpful and it has explained to you how you can use these concepts for this exercise. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.